Hello and welcome to the Energy Connect studio at Gastech 2025 in Milan. I have with me today Ivana Jamelkova, the CEO of Hydrogen Council. Ivana, thank you so much for coming back to the Energy Connect studio. Wonderful to be here again. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. To start off, could you walk us through the investment pipeline for the clean hydrogen sector? You've just about released a report. Uh, and what kind of committed investment uh, are you seeing? So that's exactly right. We came here to Gastec to launch our big new annual report on the state of play of the industry called the Global Hydrogen Compass. Uh, I'm proud to present it to you this morning. And uh, this report is really quite unique in that it brings together not only the data, and we'll get to the numbers in just a second, but also direct insights from global leaders in hydrogen. We interviewed some 70 CEOs or surveyed some 70 CEOs for the purpose of the report. And I think that perspective really enriches uh, the inside of the report. Now, the biggest news that we have to share is that uh, the global clean hydrogen industry has surpassed 110 billion dollars in committed investment i think we sat together last uh, last year at uh, at gastec in uh, in houston and back then we talked about 75 so we are looking at a 35 billion increase compared to last year that is significant and what makes me personally most excited about the numbers is that it confirms 5 years of steady growth so this is not just a one-off, this is not a quarterly result, this is a trajectory, this is a pattern. And um, we're clearly seeing the industry mature. Um, now some 500 projects have moved past FID, meaning their uh, infirm uh, sort of investment commitment in construction or already operational. Um, and that has been coupled with, uh, you know, the dropping delays, uh, cancellations of some of the less viable projects. That is a normal uh, normal type of development, but seeing the trajectory and seeing the number of strong, viable projects that are moving forward is super encouraging. And, um, you know, those of you who remember the patterns of the early days of solar, wind and batteries, I think you will find some commonalities there. No, absolutely. I'm glad that you spoke about the maturing of the industry because there are a lot of questions being asked about, you know, what's, what's happening uh, with the industry. But if you look at it in the long term, what are some of the structural challenges that you see uh, that might be adding pressure to the, uh, to the selection process of the successful projects? Well, look, thank you for mentioning that. That's, there's clearly a lot of noise in hydrogen. When we read the news every morning, um, you know, we see headlines about projects being cancelled, delayed. It's, it's not easy to stay focused and optimistic, but let's look at the numbers, right? Let's keep a cool head and look at the numbers. And the numbers tell a very clear story. Hydrogen is growing, hydrogen is maturing, hydrogen is moving forward. So clearly there are many challenges ahead, uh, just like for any uh, new clean energy solution. and. Uh, you know, everything from high interest rates to costs of energy, costs of equipment, to delayed policy clarity. I mean, I don't have to go very far for examples, but um, really the cancellations that have occurred, the delays that have occurred, have been to a large degree or can be to a large degree attributed to policy. Policy lag, policy withdrawals, U-turns, frankly, uh, and uh, just delays in terms of translating what exists on paper uh, uh, you know, into the business reality. Now, our report says very clearly that that clarity is emerging and we are very encouraged to see, you know, now we have clarity on the tax credits in the US. Um, we are starting to see the contours of what a RET, uh, Renewable Energy Directive, will do in Europe and that spur in some development, which is great. And then Japan and Korea, the contracts for different uh, schemes, uh, we really believe that they will move the needle when it comes to hydrogen. Now, uh, speaking about policy and diving a little bit deeper into that, of course, as you said, the, the industry is moving from ambition to delivery, but what more policy support would you like to see? You mentioned some of the outlines. What more in the longer term would you like to see? 
Look, that's, I'm so glad that you summarized it from ambition to delivery. That, that's, in fact, the perfect summary. That's the shift that is occurring as, uh, as we speak. And in terms of what we need next, uh, absolutely starting with policy. Just like in solar, wind and other technologies, clarity on demand, as in policy clarity on demand, uh, has been fundamental to unleashing the uh, growth cycle of these technologies. And we are looking to see something similar in hydrogen as well. So policy say that is clear and that is uh practical let's uh, let's be very clear that that's equally important and we are seeing evidence of that in Europe uh, Europe has been a little slow compared to other geographies and uh, I think with a bit of pragmatism and practicality we could really uh, move forward there so policy that is clear that is stable that is predictable that does not change over a period of time so that businesses have the time and space to to do their part and if I may add another wish, I would very much couple that with standardization and uh, clarity on technical rules. Um, I know that it is not the most exciting of topics, but here we go. If there is one thing that could uh, make a real difference in allowing us to speak the same language, allowing us to seamlessly move our molecules around, it would be that suite of unified global standards. And you mentioned about the launch of the report. Uh, this is the first edition of the Compass. What would you like to see in the second edition? <laughs> Continued growth. I think it's extremely clear. Um, look, when we set out uh, to deliver on climate goals back in 2015, uh, we had very high ambitions, very high expectations. and. Uh, uh, every day we sort of confront those and go back and say, are we on track? Are we not on track? Um, the reality is that this is a very different world. So I think for us, success is that forward movement. Success is that continued steady growth. And look, over the last five years, the hydrogen industry has averaged 50% growth year on year. If that continues, that will be fantastic. If we see more projects mature, that will be fantastic. And I, I have no doubt that that will continue to be coupled with uh, the natural attrition that we're seeing today. And that is okay. That is normal for an industry at this stage of growth. Um, uh, we chatted just before the start of the segment about the mood in hydrogen. And uh, it's true, it's been, uh, it's been a bit of a swinging pendulum between uh, you know, great enthusiasm and doom and gloom. And the reality is that it's neither, that it's simply an industry in the process of growing up. There's bound to be good news, there's bound to be less great news, but as long as we keep moving forward, as long as we keep building, I think that is the sign of success that we want to see. That's an excellent assessment. And speaking of growth, technology and AI have been always cited as uh, you know, enablers of the growth in the industry. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? There's no doubt that the energy requirements of artificial intelligence and uh, this boom in data centers that underpins it, that that's a natural opportunity for hydrogen. Not only because it can deliver benefits uh, on the sustainability front, but it's really that flexibility and resilience where hydrogen can truly shine. So we have high hopes for that. We believe that hydrogen is a very, very good fitting solution. And uh, we're looking uh, to work with a number of our members uh, on this topic. Ivana, thank you for your excellent insights and for coming down to the studio. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Likewise, and I hope that we meet again in another year and have another jump to report. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to follow us on social media. I'll be back with more studio interviews from Gastech 2025 in Milan. Until then, goodbye.